Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, there's a new edition of Tails out, and so I want to take a little bit of time and uh, introduce you to Tails a little bit. We're not going to be looking at really what's different. This is just an updated introduction. Um, what is Tails, how to use Tails, how to install it, get it ready, and things like that. So what we're going to do is first, let's have a look at the Tails website. Tails is an app the Amnetic Incognito Live System. This is, in my opinion, among the best ways that you can access uh, the internet in a secure and private function. There are several different distros that are trying to compete with this, like I saw Heads, which was near impossible to use uh, because it doesn't seem to mount external drives um, and doesn't seem to have persistence that I know of. There's a couple other ones like this as well that I looked at and said, eh, not really. I would still trust Tails more than any of them. Uh, so Tails is an operating system that from the ground up, it is based on Debian with the GNOME desktop environment and it uses uh, Tor. In fact, what it does is it sends everything through Tor at the root level. The other thing that Tails does very well is it, uh, it mimics the a identical fingerprint. Now the fingerprint, this is what the thing I'm concerned with of, with Ubuntu taking system diagnostic details on the install is that that produces what is called a fingerprint. And a fingerprint can be used to identify someone. So even if you're, um, if you download a Tor browser bundle on Windows and you're browsing on the internet, they will still see a lot of things about your system. They can narrow you down to your screen resolutions, to your operating system, a lot of different things. What Tails does though is it's going to create a unified fingerprint that as long as you're not changing a lot of the settings that are not meant to be changed, everybody using Tails on the internet is going to look like the exact same computer. And the next thing that it does is it is a, um, a consistent live key system. It's not something that you install onto a hard disk. It is meant to run as a live key. So every single time you pull it out, shut it down, close it down, everything is wiped off of it. Now it does also those support a persistent drive, which actually allows you to install extra applications in your persistent drive. So you can actually install the thing onto a USB flash drive with a persistent volume. And then when you boot up uh, Tails, it's going to give you the option to log into your persistent drive. So if you need to log in and save anything, you can log into that drive. If you don't, you just log in without logging into the drive and everything is consistently uh, secure. Now the next thing that they do um, to make sure that you don't mess up the system is they have one of the best installers there are. So what you're going to need is you're going to need one or two USB drives. So I just keep my little box of USB drives here. And if you basically start by hitting the download button and then going, am I from Windows, am I on Mac or am I on Linux? So what this is actually going to do is it's going to download it and install it onto a drive easily. Now you have another option. So here you can install it from another Tails. So if I already have a Tails install running, I can actually plug in another USB drive, run the installer and install Tails onto that new drive. Or I can install in Linux. I need um, a USB stick, which is at least eight gigabytes, about an hour. Generally, this is going to be completely dependent on um, how fast your internet connection is. I mean, I downloaded mine in a few minutes and then half hour to install. It could take five, 10 minutes. All right, so we have uh, some tools over here. Uh, what I generally do is I download, and you can either download it for USB sticks or you can download a copy for a DVD drive and a virtual machine. USB stick one should still work in a virtual machine. Uh, last time I tried it, it did, and I hope it does because that's what we're gonna be using today. So I downloaded the USB stick one. Now here, if you come over here, um, you can either download it over here or you can download a torrent file of it. And when you're downloading it over here, there is a verification extension that you can install inside of your browser. And this will install the extension and then it downloads and verifies it for you. Tails is one you always wanna make sure it's verified. So I generally just do the BitTorrent one uh, because the BitTorrent will automatically verify the download once it's complete. And then I'm left with my, uh, I'm left with my ISO image that I can either 
burn onto a CD. Now, if you want to install this with that ISO image that you've downloaded, then you actually will need two USB sticks. You're gonna need one of them to burn the image onto and booting up the computer, and then you need the second one to install the instance of Tails onto. If you happen to have a computer that is good enough to use a virtual machine, then you can actually utilize the virtual machine instead. So you can use the virtual machine and a USB stick to do that. All right, so now we're gonna come in to choose. I'm gonna go down to my ISO this time and we're going to boot this guy up. So I'm gonna put this into my virtual machine and we will go ahead and uh, start this guy up. And it looks like my tail just ran away. That's a bummer. I was looking forward to having a tail on my screen. All right. So when you boot up Tails, um, you're going to get, um, it should boot up full screen for us in the virtual machine. Um, it may or may not, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of see what it does. So it is, um, what they've done is they've gone through and they've curated the, the software just to make sure that everything is like extra audited. They want to make sure that nothing is going out that shouldn't be going out into the world. They wanna make sure that all connections are, are good and, and whatever else. And so when we get into the actual operating system, the first thing that we're actually gonna see, uh, since this is installed from a live key, um, it's gonna have a slightly different startup screen versus if you started up uh, from an install. Um, all right, so this one here is where we have our basic start screen. So you pick your language, your keyboard layout, your formats. Now there's additional settings. Um, so the administrative password is here. We can have MAC address spoofing, which is turned on by default. And then we can actually enable or disable the networking connection. So if you know for a fact you don't wanna be on the network, you can actually disable that. And then you can set an administrative password. So if you're gonna be doing any type of administrative things, you wanna do that, the default is to turn it off. Now, if you do have a persistent volume, then you will have another option here to unlock a persistent volume. We don't have one of those, so we're just gonna go ahead and click Start Tails. And then this is gonna give us our, uh, our connection. All right, so here now it's giving us this warning that a non-free virtual machine is detected. That is because of the, uh, there's parts of a virtual machine that are um, not open source. And so I'm okay with that. I fully accept these risks. So uh, we do have, it looks like my network is not turned on. I'm not sure if maybe, uh, maybe I, oh, it is turned on, all right. Uh, so what it's gonna do is it's automatically gonna connect in. And then the next thing what we should see is um, it is, it should be adjusting the clock, which, uh, based on my time, yes, it did adjust the clock. So it is going to change your clock, which is going to adjust you to whatever time zone your exit tour nodes coming from, which gives you an extra layer of protection. And then of course the, um, onion circuits over here is what tells you that everything is connected. So everything is there. So we're gonna come up into here. Now, they have curated a lot of software that there is a lot of useful applications on here that hopefully you shouldn't need to actually uh, download a lot of extra software and be very careful if you do. But we have everything, uh, KeyPass, X, we have GIMP, Inkscape, we have LibreOffice, Scribus, scanning tools, you know, just a whole variety of, of different things are already pre-installed into the system already. And so there is a large degree of things. Now this is where we have our system tools. We can add additional software. We can configure a persistent volume, which we will not be able to do right here because we are not actually installed. Uh, we also have the Tails installer. I would have to install and uh, insert another drive into the machine in order to do that. Now on a virtual machine, if you have enabled your virtual machine extension pack and you have uh, enabled your USB 3, you can plug a drive in, go into your device settings and insert the drive into the, uh, into the virtual machine and you can actually install Tails from right here. Um, that will work very well. In fact, that's the way I have installed my latest edition. Now, most cases, if you have, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have Tails already installed on a drive, 
then when you install it, it's gonna check if there's an update and it will automatically download and install. Well, it gives you, it tells you there's an update. It doesn't do it automatically. It tells you there's an update and it gives you the option to download and install the updates. So once you have a Tails built, generally it will update itself. Every now and again, there's changes that will force you to reinstall it. So keep that in mind as well. But the system tools are a very useful place to go. Um, here is, of course, we have our system monitor. Of course, you don't use something like this for, you know, for low resources. But still, even with the Tor browser running, we are still running um, uh, only 1.5 gig. Um, it's going to have an older version of GNOME on here for sure. Um, let's just double check what version we happen to have. Yeah, way old version of GNOME. <clears throat> uh, 3.22, so it's not super ancient, but but pretty old. We'll click here that you can go right on into um, right on into uh, checking the Tor browser. This is not my IP address. It does tell you that JavaScript is enabled. Uh, we do have no script, which is actually I believe turned on, so we can actually turn that off. Um, I don't really use NoScript much. Um, what I'm doing in here, if I don't want JavaScript, I come in here and I just do um, an about config. And I just come in here and just search for JavaScript and disable it like that. That's usually what I do. Now JavaScript is disabled. Now the downside is I can't select certain websites to turn JavaScript on, but that's what I like to do if I don't want JavaScript. Um, you have that option as well. We also have uh, uBlock on here as well, and I'm not sure if there's any other extensions. Let's go ahead and have a look. Uh, we have HTTPS everywhere installed as well. So those are the things that are installed on the Tor browser by default. So um, again, just a little side note too, I'm demonstrating this in a virtual box, but you never wanna use Tails in a virtual machine. This is not what it's designed for. If you want anonymity in a virtual machine, you need Hunix, which is designed to be anonymous inside of a virtual machine environment. Um, and because it runs two separate virtual machines and bounces a signal off of each other to verify everything. Um, so just, just keep in mind, you do use this for an external USB drive. Now, if you're not concerned about persistence, you can actually just take this ISO, burn it right onto a USB drive, and it will work perfectly fine. If you do need to save your files, persistence, uh, download other applications or things like that, you do need to install it on your drive. And as it's installed on your drive, you do need to uh, set up your persistent volume as well. So that is Tails. It is definitely worth having a, a copy of this laying around. Get yourself a little USB 3 stick. Uh, get a Tails with a persistent volume installed on that. And then use that. Throw that on your keychain. So if you need to access something from a, a random computer, you're very safe doing so utilizing this platform. So that is Tails. Um, as far as what is new on this particular, uh, particular build, um, let's just go ahead and and have a, a quick look at the uh, the change logs here. We should have probably done that first, but um, let's see. All right, so upgrades and changes. Um, support for Bopo Mofo. I have no idea what that is. Um, Chinese using the chewing library. All right, somebody can tell me what that actually means. We're updating the Tor browser to version eight, uh, which works better with Cloudflare things, by the way. Um, upgrading Tor 0.3. Um, we have a more recent version of Thunderbird. Actually, the Linux kernel is up to date. Uh, well, not fully up to date, but pretty good. And upgrades to the microcode, which fixes more variants of Spectre, Meltdown, and uh, level one terminal fault. So extra security and safety to mitigate the uh, Spectre and Meltdown vulnerabilities. So if you are using this for a good secure environment, make sure you are running the updates. All right, so that is our recent version of Tails and briefly how to use it, how to set it up. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments in the um, comments there down below. You can help support the channel by looking at the links in the description or right up above me and have a look at the social media if you want to follow me over on any of those that you might have and get any show updates.